One thing about Amin, one thing I like about Amin is that uh, he considered very close friends as family. Amin is like an older brother. He's like a bit of like myself also. See him like someone who's very headstrong. He's, he's a perfectionist. I never seen anyone have so much caliber in punk rock music. Uh, my name is Amin. I'm 34 years old. I'm working as an AV manager. Uh, I'm married with four kids. Amin is definitely, I would say, one of the best dad anyone could have. As a family man, he is very responsible. He takes care of his family well. He's very open and at the same time very serious when it comes to discipline also. My kids are exposed uh, to the underground scene. Lah. So Zindika is the life space. So there's a lot of gigs going on there. So they know which is which. Lah. They know this is skinhead, punks, hardcore, metal. They know all that. So, But uh, for me as a father in a band, they understand. I have to play shows. You know, Sometimes I have to leave them, play shows, on tour. They are okay with that. Back then, we were just 14. In fact, I think we were one of the youngest uh, guys to, to so-called make a band. Uh, usually, most of them were in their, I don't know, maybe around 18, 19, when they starting starting a band. But for us, it started in 96. I was only 14, and if I'm 14, boy I mean, it's only 12. Uh, I was introduced from Mael, the first Gen 69 guitarist. Yeah, so, uh, what happened is, uh, the first original drummer, Faisal, had to serve his time in the prison. So, the band is desperate for drummer, so eventually Mael just picked me up to hit the drums ah. and back then I just play I just play guitar, I don't play drums but I'm so eager to to be in a band so I just rock and roll lah, just hit the drums. Well, well back then it was uh, basically more more freedom. It was all fun. There were there were movement and all, but the main thing what we did back then was just having fun. It's more real, raw, organic. Being skinny is just it's not something that you just pick up from the shelf and yeah okay I want to be one. You know it, it it actually cultivates in your life. That's why we call it it's, it's a way of life. For me, skinny is. It's an attitude, uh, like you know, punk rock, punk rock attitude. So for me, skinhead is is like that too. Uh. No boundaries, fuck the world. For me, that's that's about skinhead, uh. Yeah. And last I used to see a lot of skinheads hang out in front of my house, like this Tampines near the Tampines MRT. So I just know that they are just fucking skinheads, making lots of noise. I knew about the skinhead subculture from from going to a gig at the, back then was the substation garden. I think the first skinhead guy I met was Atoy. I, yeah, I saw him during that point there was the band playing. And the system kills people or something like that. I can't remember the band. And then this big that one was he big? No. This very fierce skinhead guy named Atoy, which is a friend of mine also now. I never really went to a gig ever in my life until 2010 where I joined the band. That's where I start to see the whole fucking scene. Lah. Along the years, you know, people change and things like that. So, Generation 69 eventually died down. So, not, not only me, but it kind of uh, just silenced itself. 
and tell me how you met your wife. Hmm, how I met her. Hmm. Actually, I met her a few times, but I don't know her. She knows me, I don't know her, because <laughs> I'm famous. <laughs> but eventually, I met her at some pub. Her best friend was my bandmate, my ex bandmate. So yeah, I get to know, I get to know her from there lah, at the pub. Thank you. <laughs> okay, what I admire most about my wife is her brains. Seriously, her brains turns me on. Not her looks, but her brains. Why I see that? Because uh, basically she's intelligent lah. She's the first girl I met that is so smart. Yeah, because everybody has a different interest at that point of time. Uh, I mean, uh, all of us came from different background, and when we uh, before before the band started, so we have our own uh, interests. So eventually, our interest so far got in the way of our. Uh, our band, so that's why most of us just split. Uh, before my first child was born, and after she was born, uh, me and my wife and my kid, we went through hardship. Like, really bad. Uh. <laughs> uh, at that point of time, we stayed together, and we are not married. So, yeah, so. I earned back then, like, you know, uh, just a little bit near. But we have to pay rent for the house. And my income is not stable back then, that point of time. Uh, day and night, in order for us to survive. Uh. Because even though we speed up, even so-called the band just silence at that moment. I mean, most of us still meet with each other. So, and like you say, there are a few conflicts uh, in a band that is for force. It's just a thing that, that that a band will have this kind of conflict with each other, but that only proves us to be, um, you know, it, 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 it creates the bond stronger. I thought of leaving the scene because got one incident, I was really depressed and it's because of my skinhead sin, because of the politics, the corrupt politics. Uh, my friend, you know, turned me away. So, yeah lah, that point of time, like really down, down period for me. Uh. Uh, sadly, we were accused to be a Nazi band. The politics is about the left and the right have this one incident, we did uh, we did something stupid, it was meant to be a joke, you know, at, uh, at my guitarist Boon, Boon's wedding. So we took a picture, we do this. I would say right now, say in the camera in front of you guys, I am not a fucking Nazi guy, I am not racist, I have multi-racial friends. The reason I stay, firstly because of my family. They are my one big supporter and yeah, they will always support me in whatever I do. Secondly, of course, my Gen brothers, uh, my Gen 69 brothers and a few of my true friends. Uh, which is good. Now I know who is my true friend, who is not. Yeah, That's the reason why I stay and make me stronger. I mean, as a musician, he's a very street guy. Yeah, I respect him for his music taste. He has a very good and broad music taste. It's not like, you know, into one thing. And he's a perfectionist for his own craft. Ah. He can create so much with just a little chords and everything. All. I guess the band, the whole band know, knows about me. I'm a perfectionist. And my ears, I got gift on my ears. I can hear, as in, you know, every little single detail I can hear. Even if the chord went like, you know, the note went sharp or flat, I can hear it very well. I mean, yeah, I will, I, I'm very, very, very particular when it comes to, you know, recording or rehearsal, you know. 
iron fist the sound which actually i'm trying to make oi as as authentic as possible we choose iron fist because it it uh, it signifies what we are now i mean came out with the riff if i'm not mistaken at first they didn't came out with any lyrics i think uh pudin was the lyrics was came out with asfa and amin and kojak i guess if i'm not mistaken and the song actually i wrote is about it's for someone that i i kind of like you know really disagree with her. disagree not angry with and person like being like a dictator and like always dictate stuff and how things should be done stuff like that and yeah the song is actually about a big fuck you uh, to whoever that kind of person is a uh. i feel personally the content of the song nothing personal for me it's just the song itself uh. the melody the structure uh, that is special for me uh. there's no like future big plans or what for the band but uh just play as it is uh, play day by day see how it goes uh.